This story began on the 18th of January, when I saw a message from a user called testing lol in one of the Discord channels. Honestly, there was something written there that surprised me a lot, because it was so obvious and lying literally on the surface. And the funniest part is that I've mentioned it multiple times in my videos, tweets or telegram posts for several years. And no one, no one apart from testing lol has come up with a couple of extra steps to prove and demonstrate that many CSGO related features on Source 2 actually exist exist and with some tweaks they can be activated. Over the last couple of weeks I've been non-stop digging into how it all works and have put together a little guide on how you can replicate it yourself. But there is one little issue. Max at the microphone again and let's get right into it. It's worth starting with an important note that I keep repeating from time to time. All Valve projects on Source 2 utilize the same iteration of the engine. So roughly speaking, the sources of all the games located in different directories but share a single codebase. When adding any new core features and mechanics to one of the projects, the changes need to be made to the shared codebase and not in a separate branch for each game. When developers release an update to one of these games, it will, in most cases, automatically suck in all the improvements from the general Source 2 branch. At the moment, the only publicly available game that is being constantly updated is Dota 2. And because of this, digging through its updates, we regularly find leaks and mentions of other projects that are being developed behind the scenes. Skins Monkey, a CSGO trading site where you can instantly trade your old and rusty skins to something more new and shiny. Simply select a few of your current skins, see how much they're worth, pick a new one in the same price range, and if you need any particular item, you can always use the advanced filters in the middle. If you'll find any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Skins Monkey runs giveaway every day, week and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Use the code Gaben and get 5 bucks for just doing trades. And buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. On March 24th of the previous year, in the Spring Cleaning update, there were mentions of localization strings with the names of CSGO game modes. This line is located in the file called workshopmanager.dll. And on the first source engine, they are used to add tags where publishing custom maps to the CSGO workshop. However, as it turns out, these are more than just mentions. With a little trickery, you can make the Dota 2 client think that you are now sitting in a project called CSGO, and when you publish any add-ons using the source to workshop manager, the text related to Dota will automatically be replaced with the text that were mentioned on March 24th. But most interestingly, if you'll try to publish that add-on through the modified tools, in addition to the CSGO game modes, you will get hidden text called map and S2 on the published page. So when the Source 2 engine thinks that is currently in a game called CSGO, it will automatically add text that shouldn't even theoretically be on a Dota workshop publication. And I wouldn't be myself if I hadn't once again poured Dust 2 to the new engine, try hooking someone on the lawn and uploading it as an add-on to the Dota workshop with the S2 tech and the game modes from CSGO. But all of a sudden, I thought, what would happen if I modify the Dota 2 tools in a way that not only the client but also Steam itself will think that I'm currently running CSGO, and then try to publish an S2 tagged add-on to the Counter-Strike workshop. Initially, this had to be done manually, swapping all of the references from App ID 570 to App ID 730. Basically, replacing one game's as unique ID with another, so that Steam reads a different value and thinks that I'm currently playing a different game. And it kinda worked. Launching the Dota tools actually tricked the Steam client and made it look like I was in CSGO. But then I did a little more digging in the DLL libraries of the new engine, and discovered that there is a launch parameter called App ID Override, which automates all these actions. Here goes the drum roll, launching modified tools that tricks both Dota 2 and Steam clients, and it crashes. Yikes. So we need to go deeper. It turns out that if you set the app as if any other Valve game, the tools will run properly. So there is something wrong only with the app ID of CSGO. By looking at the console history, it has become clear that the game crashes when it tries to create some sort of SO cache. And if I understand it correctly, it has something to do with the CSGO and Dota 2 game coordinators. Meaning that when I go into the modified Dota client, it tries to connect to the CSGO servers, it fails and then crashes. This 
can be temporarily avoided by adding the client-only launch parameter, so that the game will skip initial connection to the servers, but sooner or later will crash anyway as it will make another attempt. Or it can be completely bypassed by turning off the internet, launching modified tools and then turning the internet back on. So we are in, let's try to open an add-on publishing tools and… or miracle! There are maps published directly from the first source engine, and we can easily open them through the editor and change the general information and the game modes. But if we launch the same tools with the workshop items parameter, we can do the same stuff but with cosmetic items like skins and stickers. And now about the issue that I've mentioned at the beginning of the video. We can of course modify existing publications, but when we try to create a new one, we get an error number 8. By researching through the Steam documentation, it turns out that the error 8 is an invalid parameter. And in terms of uploading user-generated content to the workshop, it means that one of the fields contains something that prevents it from being published. But most importantly, this error occurs only in 3 games – CSGO, Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal 2. In other words, I can easily upload files from the new engine with a hidden source to text to the CF2, Garry's Mod, Trust, Alien Swarm and many other workshops. And by looking to all sent internet packets, it is clear that this error is occurring somewhere on the client, as the server is returning only positive results. If you look at the process of publishing CSGO, Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal 2 custom add-ons from their original tools, you'll notice one very important difference. These are the only three Valve games where you have to tick the box accepting the user agreement before files can be published. Meaning that somewhere in the Source 2 engine there is a hard-coded check that if you publish to CSGO, Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal 2 workshops, they need one extra check box that doesn't exist in Dota tools. A good friend of mine tried to patch a Source 2 DLL library through a disassembler, and he has successfully managed to skip this check. But even so, despite the absence of error number 8, publication still fails. It actually managed to create some sort of a blank page in the workshop, but the client does not start publishing files to the server and simply aborts the process. I think that many of you might be guessing, what if workshop servers actually see the hidden S2 tag and just block the publication? But sadly, that's not the case either. Who's my good friend Aqua tried manually pushing this tag on an existing publication via protobufs and it fits in the right place without any problems. So let's do a little recap. If the Source 2 engine sees that the game it is running on is configured as CSGO and the files that are published to the Steam servers are in the new engine formats, it will automatically add the hidden map and the S2 tags. Meanwhile, you can publish these add-ons to absolutely any workshop apart from CSGO, Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal 2 as something stops the engine. You can easily replicate all of this by modifying the gameinfo.gi file in the root directory of Dota 2. And to be more specific, just change the parameter from Dota to CSGO in the mod section. And to actually run tools without any errors, you need to create a new CSGO folder and then copy scripts and config folders from the main Dota 2 pack right in it. I hope at least some of you will find this information useful and will be able to solve this little puzzle to the end. Leave a comment with a cowboy emoji if you watched this far and be sure to check out my previous video where I reveal all currently known information about future Valve games. Увидимся!